What's up, everyone? It's Jeremy Majors here with Majors Academy Dog Training. And this is... Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. I'm like... Let me just... Okay, okay. Stay. Stay on there. Okay. Uh-oh. Mic malfunction. Okay. All right. Well, I may just have to hold my mic uh, because it's not staying. That's not cool. All right. Maybe this will stay. Mic malfunction. Stay. Hopefully that stays. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. So once again, this is Jeremy Majors here with Majors Academy Dog Training out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, YouTube is here. Facebook is right there. And Instagram is right here. You guys feel free to ask as many questions as you like. I hope everyone is safe and um, doing okay during this crazy time. But um, if you have any dog questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to probably be here for the next hour. So no question is a dumb question. Um, so let them fly. All right. Let's get started. All right. I have a three-year-old blind dog from birth that is so sassy to her sister at times. By sassy, I mean taking toys away. Uh, has to get more attention out the door first. Definitely that alpha dog. Any suggestions? Or is there always an alpha amongst dogs? Uh, well, let's see. You're, the dog is blind. I mean, yeah, there's always going to be one that is more dominant than the other. Um, you know, and it depends on the other dog um, that the dog lives with to determine the position. If that dog that is not blind, uh, the uh, sister... Uh, if that dog is submissive to, you know, the blind dog, then sometimes that's just the way it is. Temporarily, things can change, but um, but uh, there's usually a hierarchy amongst uh, a pack of dogs. All right. Thanks for your question, and feel free to ask another. Okay. Any suggestions for a dog that is over one and terrified of life and hates me? Um, okay, so is hopefully this is a dog that you're maybe fostering. Uh, so maybe just needs to take some time. If it's terrified of the of um, of its life, then maybe it's just terrified of the new environment. I'm guessing. And then, um, uh, yeah, it just has to get new, used to you and the environment. So it probably would just take a little bit of time to get over its fear. And, um, you know, so that's what I would give the dog ultimately is some time. All right. Those of you who just joined in, uh, my name is Jeremy Majors and, uh, um, I'm out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I'm a dog trainer out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, we're here to answer your questions, uh, any and all questions. Okay. All right, let's keep moving. How do I get my German Shepherd to sit still to allow me to wipe his paws? Well, a good stay command would be good. Um, 
you know, and you can kind of easily do that. I mean, um, I always like to be able to handle my dogs with their 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 collar. Um, what's up, Matt? Oh, hey, six o'clock works tomorrow. That's just fine. Um, sorry, I didn't get back to you sooner. But anyway, yeah, so I always like to have my dog be used to being moved with just their regular collar on. Um, and what I mean by that is I will sometimes just uh, take grab the collar and walk around just kind of like how they are on leash. And then I'll make them stop and stay. And that's when I can kind of, you know, get my or wipe my paws, wipe the dog's paws. Um, or you need a good down uh, command too. If your dog, if your dog downs and stays, then um, then it should be able to stay. Now remember, you know, you'll just have to remind the dog of what to do. I just uploaded a video, um, kind of on that subject. As far as even though you know your dog is in a down or a stay, it's okay to repeat the the command to remind the dog of what it's doing. So I uploaded a video on YouTube about doorbell, uh, some doorbell work. And I got two dogs, a Cane Corso and a German Shepherd that are in the video. And um, hi, Pat. And um, so check that out. It may help you out even further. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, those of you who are watching live too, your questions are going to be the priority. Um, questions I'm reading now are kind of kind of questions that I get uh, throughout the week. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, okay. What are some good activities for games for mental exercise slash training? Well, mental exercise could come in this in duration work in the form of duration work. Um, how long does it take to get your dog to settle amongst things that are unsettling? Um, like, um, you know, in the presence of a ball, a toy, a, uh, a person, if it's nervous, a dog, if it's nervous, those are all mental challenges. Um, how long can the dog hold a down stay? And then how far can you walk away with it staying there? And then how long does it stay there? Those are all mental games um, for the dog. And then anything that anything that the dog seems fearful of that it shouldn't be fearful of is another um, good mental uh, exercise for the dog. For example, um, training your dog to be on a treadmill is a mental exercise. Um, and, um, and then something like vacuum. Uh, if your dog is afraid of the vacuum or if your dog is afraid of the broom, or anything again that it shouldn't be. If the dog is afraid of going up the stairs or down the stairs, those are all mental games that also you know help you guys's relationship too. So I appreciate that question. Okay. Um. Let's see. What do we got here? How do I get my three month old puppy to not chase the cat? Well, um, I would say teach the puppy to learn how to get used to the cat um, under your control. And so a uh, real easy solution for a three month old is to for about 10 to 15 minutes a day, um, put the leash on the dog and just chill and watch TV. I think that's about all you'd have to worry about right now. Um, you know, and, 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 or wait until the puppy's just kind of, um, relaxing, but the puppy probably again, just needs to get used to seeing the cat doing its thing under your control to so, sort of develop in a 
in a way, patience, you know? So I appreciate your question. Feel free to ask another. Ask as many questions as you like. Okay, so my roommate's dog is very food motivated, but focuses on that treat too hard and never looks for direction. How do I break this so he focuses on me for direction to learn? For example, holding a treat away from me, waiting for eye contact to reward it. All right, so that's kind of two separate things. If you want the dog to focus on you and not the treats, then don't work on don't work with the treats. But take advantage of a, what the dog wants besides the treat. For example, going out of the door. Dog wants to go outside. Okay, just wait there until the dog looks at you to go outside. Same thing in and out of crates. Same thing going in and out of cars. Anything the dog wants, um, if it listens to you and um, can hold itself. So if you can get the dog to stay or sit and you just wait, the dog's brain will start to go. And as opposed to just, you know, um, sort of reacting and assuming that it can do those things like go out when as soon as you open the door. Um, if you stop the dog, the dog will start to, to use its brain and look at you. Um, so that's kind of engaging. And then the second the second half of it is when you are holding treats and you want eye contact, then you just have to hold it longer. So you hold the treat away from you and just you have to wait until the dog again starts to go, all right, what are you doing? And then that's when you reward the dog. So the dog will be looking at the treat. And then you may even wiggle a little bit. You may even be pushy for it a little bit. I mean, he may even start doing other commands, but then he'll go. You going to give that to me? Like, what are we doing here? And then that's when you give it. But good question. Great question. Thank you for asking. And feel free to ask another. All right. Matt says, hey, Jeremy, how should I change my older German Shepherd's diet to be sure he gets proper nutrition? Soft canned food. Uh... I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily go with soft canned food. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, I know there's good food out there that are so that's soft and nutritious. But and again, I'm no nutritionist. I'm just a dog trainer. So take it for what it is. But um, I always try and keep my dogs on a... Um, a dry, dry diet, dry food, um, and or you know raw diet. Um, so the more raw you can be, I guess, would be the better, the best bet. Um, again, not talking from a from a expert uh, situation, but just what I've noticed with my dogs and other dogs that I've fed. So. So, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, the best optimum way, in my opinion, is raw. And then maybe the second best is food that doesn't have byproducts listed in the ingredients. So, Jacqueline says soft can build tartar. Yep, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, look, if the dog is like next to starving, then you can like, you know, throw some soft food in there. But it shouldn't just be a regular routine for a dog. I always try and get my dogs away from it. OK, Chrissy says, at what age do you think it's OK to introduce e-collar conditioning? Good question. Depends on the dog, um, and it also depends on your approach. Because I'll just kind of go through what e-collar conditioning is, just so people can get a general sense of that, because it is a sensitive thing. 
and there's many dogs that become collar aware um, and they only behave when the collar's on and that's not proper conditioning. So I'll just kind of go through it. In my opinion, the age, the age depends on the, it depends on a few things. What breed you're working with, what temperament within the breed, and and then the intelligence of the puppy. So it's hard to say. Um, I've e-collar trained five-month-old puppies. Um, I've e-collar trained, I don't think anything less than that, because I don't usually accept dogs until after their third round of shots. So, um, you know, if they have the intelligence to know, uh, it's just kind of hard to say. I'm sorry. But good e-collar conditioning means the dog's mood doesn't change when the e-collar's on. It's happy or it's or it's indifferent to it. So just want to put that out there for people to uh, to kind of stay aware of. Yeah, I said that right. Okay, would you consider the fear impact age? Would you consider the fear impact age? What, what do you mean by that? What would you consider the fear impact age? Is that what you meant? <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm going to try and move my mic. No, maybe I shouldn't. All right, let's keep it moving, though. Okay, I have two Rottweilers. How do you stop one of them from resource guarding at home due to their toys or things they think is theirs? Uh, are they resource guarding against you or are they resource guarding amongst each other? I'm assuming it's a chip. I'm assuming it's each other. Um, you can help it both. You On one hand, you want to let them work out who's going to just have it. And then on the other hand, if it does result in a fight, then then you can sort of intervene and and and, um, and make it a rule that fighting is obviously not OK. And then give them a break from toys so that their relationship could possibly get back to normal. Um, but it's up to you. I mean, if they don't if if if. Um, if you don't want to deal with it at all, then just pick up toys. Whatever. Don't put toys on the ground. You know what I mean? So, you can play with their toys on their own. Um, okay. So yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what, what that, what you mean by the fear impact age. Um, did you, is there a fear impact age? What's up, Bow Wow Bill? How are you, buddy? Um, yeah, I don't know about, I don't know about that. But anyway, like I said, e-collar conditioning is, uh, tricky and, um, Sometimes people need to see a professional. I have dogs come to me all the time that are what people call collar smart and only behave when the collar's on. I mean, sometimes they even shut down. I'm good, man. Hanging in there, buddy. You as well. Hope you guys are safe. Um, so, yeah. All right, Amy says, at what age would you introduce a slow feeding bowl to prevent eating too fast? You can introduce a slow feeding bowl from, from the get-go. I don't think there's any age that, that, uh, that kind of warrants or you need to stay away from a f slow feeding bowl. 
So right now, right now is fine. Um, okay, Christy says, what are good ways to help a timid pup to gain confidence? Six-month-old Shiloh Shepherd, very smart and inquisitive, but shy with people who aren't his people. So the people who aren't his people need to not uh, invade his space, need to not want to touch him. Um, you want to get him around people, but allow people, again, not to come up and touch him. I don't think he wants to be touched um, because it will turn into him lashing out once he gets a little older. Um, and so when you are dealing with a dog who is intelligent like shepherds are, they're going to learn how to get, how to stay comf comfortable uh, to a certain degree, right? They're going to learn how to get that stranger away. That's what part of why they make good, you know, um, protection dogs. But, um, so socialization isn't about meeting uh, a thousand people. It's just about meeting 10 good dog people, you know, for a while. Um, and the other thing is um, make sure that you're leaving some need for attention to strangers um, because it is my... Uh, it is my theory that if your dog is spoiled with attention, that it will be less likely to seek attention from strangers. Um, that's just how some dogs may react to too much attention. And so, uh, aware of it, at least. And, um, and maybe the dog will be more inclined to, again, t seek attention from others. But I'd say let, let the dog go to them, you know, as opposed to people coming right into um, a space where, you know, he's not comfortable. If the dog is backing up, that means the dog's not ready to be touched, you know. So does that make sense? You can... Uh, you can ask, you know, follow up questions or anything like that, because it's kind of a complex thing. But so, thank you for your question. I jumped on late, so I may have missed something. But I'm committed commented on a previous video an issue I was having. I have a four year old pit mix gunner who has always been very outgoing. Um, I've been fostering pit mixes for the last year and a half, and I've had 12 total, each at different times. A couple of months ago, one of them attacked Gunner when I was learning what the dog was like. I think because of that, and just having the foster dogs in general, has left Gunner a bit insecure. We also moved, and he had a surgery within a couple of months of this. Any pointers on building up his confidence again? And any pointers for fostering dogs while still keeping him happy and confident? Um, okay, any pointers on building his confidence again? So could I ask if he was confidence, if his lack of confidence is with the dogs? Um, because that would be a whole different answer. Or is his confidence just kind of taking a back seat with everything? And is he healed from surgery? Yes, it is very hard not to do in quarantine. You are very true. You are very correct. You are very correct. Um, all right. Because if it's with dogs, if his confidence is shot with dogs, um, you'll just have to do more uh, sort of um, uh, making sure your dogs, your foster dogs are under control for sure. Um, and one rule would be 
to hey angela hope all is well with you as well he's very uninterested in the new dogs and does much more avoiding he is also shown to be more timid of noises he is healed he had a couple of lumps removed okay so yeah um so more control over him and more control over the foster dogs would could be the key um um and so one rule that i have for any dog that comes and stays with me is that there are that there's absolutely no barking and so make sure that you know you can you can cross that off the list no barking um you know especially if it's out of control you know if they do bark it should stop within you know a minute or so um and then more control over him will his confidence will will grow th through you through your um consistent approach to sort of say hey there's nothing to be you know avoiding there's nothing to be timid of and um but you'll kind of have to continue to remind them of that uh, with your control um so that's that hope that answers your question but my dogs are very confident when it comes to all dogs and and um and that's because i take my time with the introductions and i 100 percent do not allow uh barking in the kennel all right i've heard some people say i've heard some people say belgium Malinois are not a good breed for apartment living might be my military training speaking but i think Malinois are suited for apartment life what are your thoughts i mean but you're you're a very active person it could work with active people um the cool thing is about apartments, if you do get them out, you do have to get them out and you can't just ignore them. You know, you can't just stick them in a yard and um, then sit in the house because that could go really wrong. And so if you are in an apartment, you do have to take them out. But I've seen there's a Belgian Malinois in an apartment complex um, down the road where I walk, walk my dogs and they can't take the dog off leash. And it's like, well, what kind of life is that? Um, and so I feel sorry on one hand for dogs that are in apartments, but, um, you know, I, I lived in an apartment with three, with six dogs, three pit bulls, um, one small dog, one cane corso, and, um, what was the other one? It was my roommate's dogs in an apartment in Atlanta. Um, but I also worked at a dog daycare, so I don't think that I don't even think the Belgian Malinois is for the average person, period. You know, they're just too drivey of dogs. But those are my thoughts, cuz. Hope you're doing well, man. Okay. If I don't push him to interact with other people. And just let him ignore them and not be forced to touch. Am, am I possibly increasing the chance that he could be aggressive towards people later? That's my biggest fear. My first shepherd loved all humans from the go. So this is a whole new thing for me. I mean, that's a great question and a great concern. But think about think about um, service dogs. Service dogs are not allowed to be touched, but yet have no problem with people or dogs in public. And so you want to. You want to take that into account again it's not about it's not about you could over socialize your dog uh 100 so um allowing him to decide whether to be touched or not is what you should focus on not um forcing him to like being touched without his consent you know what i'm saying so just keep it like that i mean and keep it simple it's, you know it's the same with with people we don't like to be touched by strangers we don't like to be touched without consent so um it's the same thing with smart dogs um or 
dogs that maybe have a fearful disposition genetically. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that, you know, and, and again, I know it's tough because you just want to make sure you're doing right by your dog, but give it a shot. It won't kill it. Try it for the next month or so. Um, if I had a puppy like that, I'd throw a service vest on there on my dog just so people would at least, you know, ask as opposed to, you know, people just come running if they see a puppy, man. So I've seen a lot of dogs go down that road, be over socialized and then say, I don't want humans uh, coming up to me because I was as a puppy bombarded by by humans um, coming up to me over and over and over again. You will. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. It's, it's, I've just seen it. Oh, it's, I've seen it a lot just with the shepherds for sure. Just with shepherds. So many people call me and they say, oh, he was good with people when he was a when he was younger, when he was a pup under a year. But now all of a sudden. When he's a year, he's he's lunging at people or he's barking when people come come close. And it's like, no, he wasn't good. He just wasn't biting and barking. Now that he's older and confident, he's biting and barking. And lunging, but he was never good. Read your dog that you have. What's their body language? If they are backing up, or if they're not happily going up to strangers like they happily come up to you, and you want to take that into account. You know what I'm saying? Moving forward. So, so, um, so on one hand, you do have to control the environment, which means I'm not allowing people to come up to you. But on one, on the other hand, you can also, you can also, you know, sort of get on his case a little bit too. It's not about like not getting on his case, you know? So, um, I mean, it, it's not about, I mean, uh, so what I mean by that is you also have to make sure he's under control and sort of takes your guidance in certain situations. So that's the other side because he's got, he's, he's old enough to, to understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris says, so Sonny now is 11 months old. He's lifting his leg and peeing on everything in our yard, like my truck tires. Oh, Lord. Hot tub, pool cover. Yikes. Uh, when let out, he will pee in the grass normal. Then I'll watch him go pee on our shed or whatever he sees. I yell out the door at him and he stops. But if I'm not watching... He pissed on lawn furniture and stuff like that. Oh, Lord. Um, I think that bitter apple bitter stuff maybe could work. I'm not not really sure. Uh, I haven't really had that problem. But, you know, he smells before he, pit, before he marks. So you may want to try that. Something that he doesn't like to smell on the stuff you don't like. You don't want him to pee on, but truck tires, that's, that's kind of crazy, but interesting. Okay. Let's keep moving. Yeah, he'd have to be, man. I think that's what he's doing. All right. Uh, how do you handle a dog that barks just to bark? As soon as we step outside to go to go walk, um, he's not barking at someone or another dog. He just barks to let the neighbor know he's present. He's so he's he is very tiny. Um, I correct with a hush and heel, but he just starts right back up. So. He is barking at something. He never just barks to bark. Otherwise, he just wouldn't waste the energy unless he's got a ton of energy. But that's even for a reason. Um, so he's not just barking just to bark. Um, he is barking because if he sees a dog, he's just anticipating another dog when he comes up, when he when he goes out of the door. That's just reactionary mindset. He thinks door open, there's going to be a dog. Bark, bark, bark. And so... 
um, what you'll have to do is make him use his brain in that in those in that circumstance. You'll have to start getting the dog to wait at the door um, much longer than you do, if not um, at all. You'll have to sit him, make him stay, open the door, and allow him to look and wait there for a good 30 seconds to a minute so that he can start to see what you want him to see as opposed to he just has his blinders on. He's just, he's just, there's no, there's no chance of learning when he's just in reactionary mode, door open, dog barking, you know, like that's, that's what he, that's what he sees. So you have to get more control over him overall, um, on the walk as well. And, um, he'll start to, uh, listen, you know, it's, again, it's our goal to, um, to help the dogs see the world the way it should be and not the way they think it is, even if they've had a bad experience. Um, that doesn't mean that the next 30 experiences have to be bad. So that's that. But that's a good question, man. Good question. All right, those of you who are watching on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, man, feel free to ask, um, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? Jesus, right? That's funny. I'm not going to, I don't know about that. I'm probably the only person that, no, I'm just kidding. I watched it. Um, those of you who just joined, feel free to ask as many questions as you like. There are no dumb questions, and your questions will help um someone going through the same thing so feel free to ask as many questions as you like um we are here until i'm done with my drink okay uh matt says our younger shepherd was kicked by a delivery driver now she's very aggressive with any delivery drivers oops um usually tries to bite at their feet i will place her as she was taught when i'm home but she's on a wireless fence when I'm not home. If I'm not home, she will be aggressive. What to do? That's a tricky one, man. Um, if you're not going to be there to guide her, that's a tricky one. You know, she is defending territory, which is kind of what she should do, especially the younger, um, especially, you know, a shepherd. Um, that's a tough one. You know, one one way to make sure that it doesn't happen, obviously, is to not let her outside. But that doesn't fix the problem. To fix the problem, you'll have to be out there with the dog enough to um, to be able to learn. You could possibly throw a bark collar on a dog, but that's that's a little risky, man. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe we could talk more about it, and I could give you some tips if I learn a little bit more, but that, that's a tough one. But if he was doing that, at, when if the dog was doing that while you were home, I would tell you to just obviously be there to correct the dog while you're home. Um, so that's kind of something you could do too to help is when you're home and she's out, what's her behavior with the driver? You know, if, if she's outside, if she's outside, chances are she may get into the same uh, behaviors and then you can get her used to the drivers via your you know, your, your leadership. <clears throat> Sean says, my dog does not give my wife the same respect she gives me. I've started letting her walk the dog with me and I'm training my wife on the handler side. Do you have any other suggestions? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Take note as to um, how much the dog um, can get away with 
what the dog wants to get away with, with her. And then um, the training will definitely help gain the respect. But the easiest way to gain respect um, is to not only work the dog, but also shut down the wants, the extras, the luxurious type stuff like treats, petting, and, um, and, and, and things like that. You know, you, you even step, stepping away or pushing, pushing him away, um, to create a little bit more interest so that the dog is chasing the attention as opposed to the other way around. So in a way, it kind of be, you know, indifferent or cold to the dog. So the dog wants, really wants the attention. And then, and then um, Robin can get the dog to behave to get the attention, as opposed to, again, just assuming uh, the dog can just get attention whenever it wants. So that was, those are the things you want to think about. Um, and then make those adjustments. And then obviously she has to follow through with whatever command she gives him. Um, yeah. But we can talk more about that all, all day. You know? My pleasure. Okay, I've had three dogs, and yesterday put down the second old dog, the dog we have left. Two-year-old Chihuahua was very much attached to our 13-year-old Border Collie. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, how do I make sure he doesn't go into a depression or notice a big difference? Um, so far, he has been hesitant to eat his meals, and he's pretty food-motivated. But that's so far the only thing we've noticed different with him so far. But how do we keep him from progressing worse issues in the future? I don't know. I don't think that, I think that loss of appetite is, if it's the only thing now, it probably will be the only thing, hopefully. Um, you know, I would say uh, on one hand, you want to make it as, you want to be indifferent to it on one hand. You know, you, otherwise he could become more misbehaved. I've seen that because we're feeling bad for him. So yes, it is warranted to feel bad for him, but watch how much more you allow him to be and do to get out of his depression. On one hand, again, maybe we can cater to it. On the, on the other hand, we have to be indifferent to it because indifference is also a huge motivator as far as getting through um, trauma or getting through tough situations. So, you know, I hope that helps. But I'd be interested to to uh, f uh, find out if, in fact, those issues do worsen. So uh, keep me in the loop if you want. I like to learn stuff about like that, you know what I mean? So that's that. Can dolls get coronavirus? I'm going to go ahead and say no. I'm going to go ahead and say no. And I hope I'm right. I did hear from someone that it can be passed through dog's fur. Don't know how true that is. 
So yeah, I hope not. All right. More questions. Okay. I have a board and train who is an incessant whiner in the car. Whining has stopped in all other areas except the car. What would, what would you suggest? He doesn't whine while crated in the car, but his owner car, owner's car doesn't have space for a crate. Um, check to see if the dog has a good down command. If the dog can hold it down and it's still whining, then you can let the whining just ride it out and dissipate based on how the dog is just doing the down. If the dog does the down, then, then the dog's mind is like halfway occupied with doing a job, having something to do. And then it really can't indulge in why they're whining. But I would, I would strongly suggest that you recommend the crate for the owner um, because being in a crate is a really good way to get a dog to be less anxious in the car. I mean, you'll still have dogs who are anxious in the crate in the car for sure. But, um, but for those of you who have new puppies and there's a lot of you, uh, keep the dog in the crate in a car. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, the whining it out did actually work for Super on the way there. Hope he is being awesome and being a fast learner for you. Super is being awesome and being a fast learner he's a very sweet dog man but that's how staffies are usually man they're really they're really good he's doing just fine i'll get you some pictures tomorrow Okay. All right, couple more. We have an. Um, <laughs> my dog walks well on leash until the car passes. Then he she's obsessed with the moving car and lunges at it. We live in the country, so it doesn't happen a lot. At first, I'd like her. I'd make her sit. But then she got even more anxious. Not treat motivated. Suggestions. So for all you positive only treat based trainers, what you gonna do with this dog? Hmm? What you gonna do now? Um so what I would do uh for you is we would make sure the heel is uh, as perfect as it can be. And what I mean by healing is the dog by your side with the collar. Uh, first of all, you got to have a collar that you can't, uh, get necessarily a good heel with a, with a, with a harness. So, um, you'll have to get a collar if you don't, if you don't have one, if you do, again, that heel should be really good. You got to work on the heel which will give you a dog that can be open to um, to um, not open to not being able to be obsessed with cars. Because right now, if there's no control on the walk, then the dog is allowed to fall victim to its nerves, nervousness, because there's no leadership coming from you, if that's the case. Now, I'm not saying there's no leadership coming from you, but that's how obsessions can become out of their control. And so, again, the heel has got to be by your side. 
loose leash and you must try to give the dog more space from the road too. try walking in people's yard a little bit more you got the prong collar so that's good so you want to work on that walk um when there's no cars that walk should be good without cars and and then so then when you start to see a car um you can start guiding her as soon as she notices it or even before she notices it doesn't matter but then she can't notice you changing either because when you sit the dog that's paying attention to the car on your hand on your hand you're associating sitting with now this new thing that she doesn't like which makes it worse for her and so you don't want to build an association with her with her trigger so to speak you want to on one hand be indifferent to it so the message would be we're going to walk and that's it you're going to you're going to heal and we're going to walk no matter what it is and i'll show you by by doing that that cars aren't something to react to i get tons of dogs that that are nervous about cars too because um i live in the country too and a lot of dogs come from the city um and so i've got a uh a saint an english mastiff why am i thinking saint bernard oh okay not a saint bernard an english mastiff and he is a puppy and he is reactive to cars in the same way so, so yeah, get that walk right. That may be the game changer. But no, but again, don't sit. Keep walking. All right. Thank you for your question. That's a great question. It's going to help out a lot of folks. Okay. We have an American bulldog, terrier. Uh, Fitz isn't biting me in bed anymore. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> oh, I'm good to hear. That's really good to hear. You're welcome. Tell me, uh, DM me or something, how, how you got that, how exactly it, it happened to, I'd love to know. Uh, okay. What can you do to stop to... What can you do about dogs licking kennels when they're when they are in them? He always eats beds, mats, but uh, but he will lay on a crochet blanket. Notice he was not he was on cot there. Should I get one? Yeah, you can try getting one. Um, you can try getting one. Um, the bigger the, the more important part is uh, is is how you how the dog behaves in the crate, and so. You won't need to worry about um, you won't need to worry about licking anymore because it's anxiety, and so a trainer will be able to help the dog work through the anxiety. Did it help the licking when made him stop, or what made him stop? Uh, may may what made him stop is first of all. Um, the lack of energy so learning learning takes a toll on the brain and so um he is uh he's pretty tired by the time he gets in his crate um through the walks through all the skills that we work through and then even just him learning how to socialize around dogs it's all it's all exhausting to him so so exercise um, probably helps a lot. All right. Okay, I got one more question for you guys, or one more answer to a question. You're awesome. He needs that, I'm sure. Socializing him was interesting. Yeah. 
Okay, let's see. I have a three-year-old. No, that's not it. Here it is. No, it isn't. Where'd it go? No, that's not the one. Okay. My 10-month-old puppy seems to have an aversion to kids sometimes. He began barking like crazy every time a kid walked by, even if they weren't doing anything to provoke him. Yet other times he seems perfectly fine with kids. I've heard that dogs go through fear periods, but I don't know if this is something that we need to address right away or just monitor and continue to expose them to kids carefully. Uh, the last part is what you need to do. Monitor him and continue to expose him to kids carefully, 100%. Um, yeah, if he's barking like crazy, man, you've got to get him under control. Um, you've got to get him to realize that that's not okay. Make sure kids don't are not provoking him, though. Um, you know, so a young, impressionable puppy needs the more time you can be there in those moments, the faster they're going to learn. And so um, be there more times than not. Um, and if you can't be there, don't uh, leave the puppy outside alone um, to be able to, again, allow those fears to just settle in and dry like concrete. Um, be out there with the dog for sure. And um, if you're not, then don't put the dog out there. All right. That's a good question, though. All right, you guys. Those of you who just joined, I'm sorry. I got to get out of here. But um, thank you guys for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, likes, whatever, uh, if you enjoyed it, whatever. We're going to be here next week, same time, same place. And um, come with your questions. I really appreciate the time. And uh, this is our 151 episode. Um, and I've got about 300 and 50 uh, videos on YouTube. So check those out. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Have a good night, you guys.